Here at the Ryersonian, we've been following what's happening in Ukraine and we've been bringing you the developments to the story. I have with me today Arn Kislenko, um, who will be providing us with a little bit of analysis. Uh, he's a teacher at Ryerson University and he's also an expert in international relations. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, so we've recently learned that President Yanukovych is returning to office today after a sick leave. Um, a headline on a Ukrainian news website Sunday actually stated, Yanukovych between war and defeat. What do you think his options are at this point? Uh, well, you know, to be honest with you, there, there are not very many uh, in the obvious sense that his country is torn apart. And it's torn apart in more ways than most media outlets even cover. This is really right. a 10-year crisis. It's not really a few months crisis. And it has very much to do with Russia as well as Ukraine's prospective place in the East, or, or in the, uh, the European Union, I should say. But this, this uh, connection to the East is what's really the issue, the connection with Russia. So if he, if he chooses to sort of stick to his guns and uh, stay with the accord that he signed on Russia, uh, his country will very likely descend into a kind of semi-civil war, at least politically. Um, and if he doesn't, then he, he's not in office very long. Right, and, and you talked about Russia, and that's part of the reason why protesters are so angry. Could you talk to us a little bit about why they're so angry and what it's going to really take for them to give in? Uh, well, the protesters are angry on a number of different levels. The first was the obvious that they, uh, the government decided to go with Russia, basically. They were reneged on an accord with the European Union, right. which, of course, is much more than just economics. It's seen as a kind of cultural and historical drift towards the West. Uh, and then they clamped down on protesters, so it's a sort of you know, double edge, if you will. Um, now, they've made some concessions, but uh, as is with many protests, the numbers swell, the demands increase. So now you're talking about uh, you know, people wanting greater democratic freedoms, more participatory government. So it's kind of lit a genie out of the bottle. But uh, the Russian card is by far the most important. And what I, I think a lot of people don't understand is that Ukraine is a sharply divided country. It's not full of just Ukrainians. The eastern half is dominated by Russians, ethnic Russians. Um, and so the, the polity of the country is much more diverse uh, than we often give credit to here in the West, principally because we have a lot of Ukrainian populations here and right. Canada was supportive of the Orange Revolution. Uh, so it's a real mess. It re it's not much of an analysis, but it's a real mess. And, and you mentioned it's a, it's a real mess. Do you see it cleaning up anytime soon? What do you see in the near future? I, I think it, in, invariably we're going to have to head to some sort of international uh, brokered negotiations. That seems to be in the cards. Um, and the real wild card in all of this is, is uh, Moscow's viewpoint, what, what Putin decides to do. The good news is he's distracted right now with the Sochi Olympics right. and <laughs> other issues. That's the bad right. news is, is that uh, Russia has never lost interest in Ukraine. They see it as a fundamental interest to their national integrity, to their, their nation state. Um, and they have huge amounts of money invested, $15 billion as of November, just uh, buying government bonds. Um, so this is a real predicament, and, and uh, right. I'm obviously hopeful, like the rest of the world, it won't descend into civil conflict, but it's likely to go on for a very long time. It has been going on for 10 years, just not in such a spectacular fashion. Right, uh, and, and that's all I have for you. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, no, not really, <laughs> other, <laughs> other than like with most crises, it takes a, a great deal of time to play out, right. and there's a great deal of history here. Most, most, I'm a historian, of course, but most people don't pay at all any attention to the historical dynamics. This is not a new crisis. It's a very, very old crisis, just with a new face. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here with me. My pleasure.